Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. Yo ho, yo ho, yo ho. A vast me hearties, drink up your grog and rum, set the sails and man the helm. For tonight, it's a pirate's life for us. The Age of Piracy, along with the Wild West and the Age of Chivalry, are one of those time periods that resonated with people of all ages, and we all have an image of pirates in our mind. Peg legs, hook hands, hats, buried treasure, sea chanties, squawking parrots, and way too much rum. The name pirate itself comes from Greek origins, rooting all the way back to the word pirla, meaning an attempted attack and this evolved into the Latin pirata meaning sea robber and from there it became the word pirate. And while we may have this image of pirates in our mind, how accurate is this image? What were pirates like in the age of piracy? Well to start with they did actually exist, however it seems life may not have been as merry as the movies and theme park rides made it out to be. It would have been a tough life and many pirates would have come from poverty and realised that life was easier plundering on the seas. Many other pirates would have been young sailors who too realised it was just easier to steal than live an honest life. Of course pirates would have stolen gold and treasure, however they also would have desired food and essentials for living on the rough open seas. Though of course the things that pirates, real and imaginary, definitely did have were ships. We all have an image of a pirate ship in our head, though what even is a pirate ship? Truth be told, a pirate ship could be literally any kind of ship, whether that be a huge sailboat or a tiny dinghy. If it was commandeered by a pirate, then it was a pirate ship. Though today, however, we'll be looking to the more traditional kind of pirate ship. You know the kind I'm talking about. The kind of pirate ship that kids, and definitely not grown men, have made out of Lego. Honestly, this video could have been called a name explained guide to sailboats, but pirate ship sounds way more cooler. Pirates, of course, were criminals, wanted men and women. They simply couldn't go to a dockyard and buy a ship, nor were there shipbuilders making ships specifically for pirates to purchase. If a pirate wanted a boat, there was one key way they could get one, by stealing it. These stolen ships would either be naval or merchant vessels. They were Regardless of what kind of ship it may be, they would load them up with cannons and voila, a pirate ship is born. Another way a ship could become a pirate ship is via mutiny. A sailor on a ship could declare themselves a pirate and take over the ship for themselves. Pirates would often rename their ships too with more intimidating names. A great example of this is the name of the most infamous pirate ship, owned by the most infamous pirate, Blackbeard's Queen Anne's Revenge. This ship was initially a French ship by the name of La Concorde. When Blackbeard and his crew commandeered this ship, they added 40 more cannons to it and of course renamed it to Queen Anne's Revenge. This name is believed to derive from Blackbeard's beliefs. Queen Anne died with no children to take over the throne, so was replaced with George I, the first British monarch of the House of Hanover. Blackbeard was a firm supporter of Queen Anne and her regime. He wished for her line to the throne to carry on somehow, so an ode to her he dubbed his ship Queen Anne's Revenge. And of course we should look into how Blackbeard himself got his name. He had a black beard. Maybe you didn't need me to cover that one for you. However, while it's easy to figure out his nickname, his real name isn't as easy to figure out. Yep, surprise surprise, his name wasn't actually Blackbeard. We aren't 100% sure as to what his name actually was. He is from that time in England where language wasn't really standardised and people spelt their own name in a variety of ways, however they felt at the time. The two most common names you'll see from are Edward Fatch or Edward Teach. The other surname also seems to be recorded as Fatch, Fatch and Tack, though more recent evidence points to the spelling being Edward Fatch, so I guess we won't really know for sure. In all honesty, Blackbeard is just a really interesting character in history and this seems like a good enough place to talk about him, as I don't think why was Blackbeard called Blackbeard would make the most interesting video. Perhaps are there any Blackbeards left will happen in the future? Anyway, today we aren't really looking into the specific names of pirate ships or the names of pirates themselves, but rather the individual sections and parts that make up pirate ships. I'm sure you've seen annotated diagrams of pirate ships before, with arrows pointing to the specific parts of these ships, with the names of these sections on the ships attached to them. It's these names I want to look into. We will be looking into various parts of these ships, explain what exactly they are, and of course, how they got their names. And it's here I must admit that I'm in no way any sort of sailing expert. The closest I've come to being in control of a boat is being on Splash Mountain at Disneyland. So if you happen to be the kind of person who's into boats, then please give me more details down in the comments below. Also, despite being told that I look like a pirate, I am no expert on pirates either. And of course, designs for pirate ships and sailboats on the whole differ across models. So in my diagram, I may point to something being somewhere while on another ship it might be in a completely different location. Also my diagram is heavily inspired by this diagram I found online from hogwartscampus.com drawn by a user by the name of Randwall so go check out their site. That's enough pre-rambling however let's get into this. To start with we have the masts. This is a word believed to derive from the proto-Indo-European mazdo meaning pole slash rod. These masts serve the purpose of supporting the sails and rigging of the boat. While some ships may have just one mast you can see ours has three and each of these masts have unique names 
names unto themselves. These names are the foremast, mainmast, and mizzard mast for the front, middle, and back mast respectively. The foremast has this name as on the front of the ship, and fore is an old word for front. We still use it today in other situations, like how we can call a dog's front legs its forelegs. I feel the mainmast is pretty self-explanatory too. It's clearly the main mast of the ship. But what about the mizzen mast? This is the mast on the back of the ship. Mizzen isn't a word I've ever heard used to describe something being at the back. If the front mast is called the foremast, then wouldn't the hind mast be a more logical name? Mizzen seems to be something of a nautical term, however, which means mast behind the main mast. Seemingly coming from the French mizzen, but beyond this, we don't seem to be too sure. Within these masts, you'll find many important parts of a sail ship, with of course the sails themselves, which are pretty darn important for a sail ship. Sail is thought by some to come from the pie root of sec, meaning to cut, as you'd have to cut cloth to make it into a sail. Sail, as well as being a noun, is a verb too. You can sail a sailboat. These sails have names unto themselves too, like the core sail, the top sail, the top stay sail, just names like that. Though amidst the sails, there are some other important parts of the pirate ship, these being the crow's nest and the fighting top. While these things might seem similar, they actually have different uses. The crow's nest is made for observation, while the fighting top was more for, well, fighting. Platforms, archers, and snipers could shoot at nearby ships from. There was more than just the fighting top, however. Masters would have just tops too, which were used for structural support. Of course, this name comes from the fact they're towards the top of the masts and they're used for fighting. Crow's Nest, on the other hand, has a much more interesting story. The Crow's Nest, as we know today, is believed to have been invented around 1807. However, the idea of having a crow's nest on board is thought to date back even further with the Vikings, who supposedly kept actual crows on board. These crows would be kept in cages, and when the Vikings were lost as to where to go, they would be released, and the ship would follow the crow, in the knowledge that the crow would fly towards land. And as ships developed and tubs were put on the mast for people to observe from, these crows weren't needed anymore. However, they would be the namesake for the observation point of the ship, as they were so important to sailors of the past for observing. And of course, by the sails, you'll find the ratlins. These are the crisscross ropes that can be scaled to navigate the sails. In times when these, these would have been what you'll climb up to delay a watery grave on a sinking ship. Its etymology, however, seems somewhat unknown. Though, I'd like to imagine they're named after rats, and how they scurry away from danger, like a pirate scurrying up one of these on a sinking ship. As I mentioned, a lot of the sails have somewhat self-explanatory names. One that doesn't have is the jib sail, which is the sail at the front of the ship. It's thought this name might come from an older word of jib, meaning swing around, as I guess this sail would help the boat swing around. Though, what's interesting about a jib is it's this kind of jib we're referring to when we say to someone, I don't like the cut of your jib, as different nationalities would have different designs and cuts for their jib sails. So if a sailor saw a fast boat and said they didn't like the cut of their jib, it meant they didn't like the design of the other boat's jib, as it told them what country the boat was from. The jib sail is attached via the jib boom. The pole that sticks out the front of the ship. This name obviously comes from the fact that it's a boom for a jib, and a boom being another name for a long thing that holds something in place, like we see it with a camera boom. And the jib boom is attached to the bowsprit. This name is thought to come from an old German language word, Boxsplit, with these parts of the word meaning bow, as in the front of the bow, and pole. While that's the sails and the mast of the ship done, we're only just getting started with the main body of the ship. And even that has a name too, the hull. The body of a boat, however, wasn't the first thing to be called a hull. Initially, hull was the name for a seed covering, like a pea pod. This is why it sounds a little bit similar to husk, and it's thought to come from the Proto-Germanic hullu, meaning cover, as these hulls cover up seeds. This name was given to the body of boats, as some thought they looked similar to seed covers. You know, now that I think of it, I can see the resemblance, especially of a canoe and a pea pod. At the head of the ship, we have the forecastle, with above it the forecastle deck. This is the part of the ship where the ordinary pirates would have resided, as far away from the captain's quarters as possible. Once again, we see this fore term, like with the foremast, and that's because this is at the front of the ship. The castle part comes with the idea of it being fortified in there, as it's where the sailors would have resided. You often see it spelled and pronounced as Foskull, which derives from the accent of pirates. I always love when accent can change the spelling of a word. And past this, we of course have the main deck, which has a name that leaves little to the imagination. And on this boat, you'd regularly see another boat too, which could be used to escape if your ship was sinking, or if you needed a smaller boat to get to land. However, there's something else that should be here too, and that's the legendary plank, a punishment that pirates would use on others to send them to Davy Jones's locker. However, it seems in reality, the act of making someone walk the plank was only very rarely used. In fact, pirates actually tried to kill as little as possible. They wanted to keep people alive so their reputation could be spread. No one can talk about how scary you are if you kill everyone who is scared of you. So while the plank may not have been as common as we all think, it still existed. I even remember adding a plank to my pirate ship because it didn't come with one. Carrying on with the top deck of the ship, we have the quarter deck. This is the part raised above the main deck, and this name comes from that below 
at the captain's quarters, and on the quarter deck itself you'll find the wheel of the ship. So it's safe to say that this is a very important part of the ship. Well, its name might not be too interesting. However, you may have heard that I just referred to the wheel of the ship as just that, the wheel. There's actually a more nautical term for it, with that being the helm. Helm is just a catch-all name for the instrument that is used to steer a ship. It could just be levers, but in the case of a pirate ship, it's a wheel. This comes from the old English helma, meaning position of guidance, which stems from the older pike kelp, meaning to hold, as of course you hold onto the helm. The final part of this upper deck is of course, the poop deck. Yep, the name that made me want to make this entire video. No, it isn't the part of the ship people use as the toilet. The poop deck is the highest point of the deck and makes up the roof of the navigation room. Despite what poop means now, this name derives from the old French word for the stern, which we'll talk about in a moment, poop. So poop evolved into poop and then it became known as the poop deck. And as I mentioned below the poop deck is the navigation room, which is where the maps would be and whatnot. While it might not be the most exciting of names, the word navigation itself really ties to the ocean, where it comes from the word navis meaning ship and egir meaning dry forward. So even though you can navigate on land, the sea was what was originally meant to be navigated. Under the navigation room lies the captain's quarters, which too is pretty self-explanatory. It's the part of the ship for the captain, though quarters referring to somewhere somewhere resides as opposed to a fourth or something, stems from meaning a portion of a town, and all this attaches to the back of the ship, which is called the stern. Stern is thought to come from the old Norse John, meaning steering, as steering is done at the stern of the ship. Below the captain's quarters you'll find the infirmary and the mess, the places in which the pirates would go to be medically treated, well whatever counted as medicine at that time, and eat. Infirmary is a noun form of the adjective infirm, which means weak. This comes from the Latin infirmus, meaning the same thing. Mess on the other hand comes from the French mess, meaning portion of food. On this level of the ship you'll also get the capstan. The capstan is a device you'll find on ships used to help move heavy objects around. These work via pulley cords, so this is why the name comes from the old capserte, which means pulley cord. And past here you'll find the gun deck under the main deck. This is because it's here that a lot of the ship's guns and cannons are stored. And at the front of the lower deck you have the most important part of the ship, the rum and water casks. And finally we have the bottom deck of the ship. This is the part of the ship that is actually underwater and is also known as the orlop deck. It's thought that the name orlop may come from a corruption of over overlapping, relating to the beams of wood on the ceiling of this deck. Just below the rum and water cask where the ship's store and the cargo hold. This is the place where a lot of the supplies for the ship would be stored. And at the very end of this bottom deck you'll find the brig too, which is where captured prisoners would be kept. Brig is actually a whole different kind of boat, but because these brig boats would often be used as prison ships, the prisons on boats were too referred to as brigs. Put me in the brig, I don't mind. That may be the inside of the boat, however various parts of the outside of the boat have names too. The bottom part of the ship is called the keel. This is thought to come from Scandinavian roots and relates to the Proto-Germanic Gorilla meaning to swallow. I guess is the part of the boat that gets swallowed up by the ocean. This keel is also the namesake of the keel hall, a type of punishment where your body would be scraped against the keel of the boat, with all the barnacles the ship had amassed scraping against your back. It's a shame the plank wasn't used as much as that somehow sounds way more desirable than this. And finally, at the very bottom at the back of the boat we have the rudder. The rudder helps in the steering of the ship and turning it. In some ways it is a lot like an oar for these massive ships, hence why it comes from the old English lodo, meaning oar. And that is more or less a complete name explained guide to a pirate ship. Well, just a sail ship actually, but like I said, pirate makes it sound way more cooler. However, if there's anything you think I've missed out on, please do let me know. But hopefully, if you find yourself on a pirate ship, you'll know your jibs from your stern to be able to work hand in hand, well, hand in hook, with any pirate you may spy. Anyway, I think I'm going to go grab myself a nice tankard of grog. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just a small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to Stepped In and All Things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Jack at me so I know you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again thank you all so much.